Good morning, kindergartners. Since next week the circus is coming to Chabad, I thought I would read you a book about the circus. So this one is called If I Ran the Circus by Dr. Seuss. And you know it's going to be pretty crazy. There's going to be all sorts of wild characters in this book. So look at all the pictures really closely. I hope you enjoy it. If I Ran the Circus In all the whole town, the most wonderful spot is behind Sneelock's store in the big vacant lot. It's just the right spot for my wonderful plans, said young Morris McGurk, if I clean up the cans. Now... A fellow like me, said young Morris McGurk, could get rid of this junk with a half hour's work. I could yank up those weeds and chop down the dead tree and haul off all those old cars. There are just two or three. And then the whole place would be ready, you see. All ready to put up the tents for my circus. I think I will call it the Circus McGurkus. The Circus McGurkus, the world's greatest show on the face of the earth or wherever you go. The Circus McGurkus, the cream of the cream. The Circus McGurkus, the circus supreme. The Circus McGurkus, colossal, stupendous, astounding, fantastic, terrific, tremendous. I'll bring in my acrobats, jugglers, and clowns from a thousand and thirty-three faraway towns to the place that you'll see em in ladies and gents right behind Sneelock's store in the great McGurk tents and I don't suppose Mr. Old Sneelock would mind when he suddenly has a big circus behind. After all, Mr. Sneelock is one of my friends he might even help out doing small odds and ends, doing little odd jobs. He could be of some aid, such as selling balloons and pink lemonade. I think 500 gallons will be about right, and then I'll be ready for opening night. Look at all that lemonade and all these cups and all those balloons. What an opening night, what a night, what a sight. I'll hoist up the curtains, the crowd will crowd in. And my circus McGurkis will promptly begin. With a welcoming toot on my welcoming horn by my horn tooting apes from the jungles of Jorn, where the very best horn tooting apes are all born. Cause the very fresh air there is fine for their lungs. And some of those fellows have two or three tongues. What? Two or three tongues. Hmm. This way, step right in. This way, ladies and gents. My sideshow starts here in the first of my tents. When you see what goes on, you'll say no other circus is half the great circus. The Circus McGurkis is here on stage one from the ocean of Ulf is a sight most amazing, a walrus named Rolf, who can stand on one whisker, this wonderful Rolf, on the top of five balls, two for tennis, three for golf. It's a marvelous trick, if I say so myself. And on stage number two, here is something quite new, from a country called From This comes this drum tummied snum, who can drum any tune that you might care to hum. Doesn't hurt him a bit, cause his drum tummy's numb. And you'll now meet the foon, the remarkable foon, who eats sizzling hot petal pebbles that fall off the moon. And the reason he likes them red hot, it appears, is he greatly enjoys blowing smoke from his ears. Of course, pebbles like this are quite hard to collect, but Sneelock will manage somehow, I expect. 
After all, Mr. Sneelock is one of my friends, and I'm sure he'll help out doing small odds and ends. Have you guys noticed all the rhyming words in this book? There's a lot of them. And on stage number four, we'll see Willy Walloo, who can throw his long tail as a sort of lasso. With a flip of the hip, with a tail of this kind, he can capture whoever is standing behind. He can capture old Sneelock, I'm sure. He won't mind. And now here is a hoodwink who winks in his wink hood. Without a good wink hood, a hoodwink can't wink good. And folks, let me tell you, there's only one circus. With wink hooded hoodwinks, the circus McGurkis. Can you wink at the hoodwink? See if you can wink at him. He might wink back. The show of all shows. There's no other showman who shows you a show like a blindfolded bowman. The blindfolded bowman from Bigger Barut, the world's sharpest sharpshooter. Link, look at him shoot. Through the holes in four donuts, two hairs on a worm, and the knees of three birds without making them squirm. And then on through a crab apple up on the head, of Sneelock, who likes to help out, as I've said. And now come to this spot where the spotlight is hot, and you'll see in the spotlight a juggling jot, who can juggle some stuff you might think he could not, such as 22 question marks, which is a lot, also 44 commas, and also one dot. That's the kind of Circus McGurkis I've got. But that's just my sideshow, a start, a beginning. This way to the big tent, you'll find your head spinning. Why, ladies and gentlemen, youngsters and oldsters, your head will qu quite likely spin right off your shoulders. So hurry, step lively, quick, ladies and gents, and get to your seats in my tent of all tents. My parade of all parades is about to commence. By the way, thank you for the parade today. You will see the drum major Sneelock swing swing his dulce baton. And my organ the gorgon the gorgeous come on with its hot tune and tight tune and tight and the bolt drum and played in two joints. Played in all six with snorts and a thundering bit. Pitches super stupendous, tremendous, too rare. Please join in the chorus. Then a fluff muffled truffle will ride on a huffle, and next in the line I find flummox will shuffle. The flummox will carry a lurch in a pail, and a fibble will carry the flummox's tail. Can you see all this going on? While on top of the flummox, the three harp twanging snarp will twang mighty twangs on their three snarper harp. While a bolster blows bloops on a three nozzled bluzer, a nolster blows floops on a one nozzled noozer. And then comes a lion, who's partly a trout, then more stuff for 45 minutes about. That's a long parade. And then behind them, then while everyone stares, Come to my to and fro marchers, who march in five layers. The froes march on twos, and the twos march on froes. Don't know how they do it, but that's how it goes. And now comes an act of enormous enormance. No per former performers performed this performance. This stunt is too grippingly, slippingly frightening. Down from the top of my tent like greased lightning. Through pots full of lots of big stickle bush trees slides a man, what a man, on his roller skate skis. And he'll steer without fear, and you know at a glance that it's Sneelock, the man who takes chance after chance. And he won't even rip a small hole in his pants. Amazing. And now here in this cage is a beast most ferocious, 
who's known far and wide as the spotted atrocious, who growls, howls, and yowls, the most blood-curdling sounds, and each tooth in his mouth weighs at least 60 pounds. That's more than you weigh. And he chews up and eats with the greatest of ease, things like carpets and sidewalks and people and trees. But the great colored Sneelock is just the right kind of a man who can tame him. I'm sure he won't mind. Then I'll let Sneelock off for a few minutes rest while high over your heads you will see the best best of the world finest fanciest breezy trapezing my Zuma Zap troop from West Upper Bendizing who never quite know while they zoop and they zoom whether which will catch what one, or who will catch whom, or if who will catch which by the what and just where, or just when and just how and which part of the air. Ay, ay, what a circus, my circus, my gurkus, my workers love work. They say, work us, please work us. We'll work and we'll work up so many surprises. You'll never see half of it if you had 40 eyes. And now again, Sneelock, brave Sneelock is back, risking life on my patented life-risking track. While the speedsters I call my colliding collisions race around in swift cars called abrasion contusions. And Sneelock just lies there, not one bit excited. I know he won't mind, he'll be simply delighted. And here is a contest of brute strength and muscle. Kid Sneelock, my champ of all champs, will now tussle and wrestle a beast called the Grizzly Ghastly and slap him around, then he'll slam him down fastly and pin both his shoulders right flat to the mat. Kid Sneelock will love it, I'm sure about that. And while that goes on there, look at this, go on here. Have you heard of my herd of through horns hump jumping deer? Every deer jumps through horns of another pell-mell, while his horns are jumped through the, at the same time as well. By a deer whose horns also are being through, by another who's having his horns jump through too. Oh, this is crazy. Which I'm sure trainer Sneelock can train them to do. Then the whole tent will ring with hoorays and wild shouts when I wheel in my whales and they turn on their spouts. From my first whale number one with an aim that aims true, sprouts a sprout, sprout, Sprouts a spout that spouts Sneelock up to whale number two. And then whale number one spouts his spout like a gun. And that spout spouts old Sneelock right back to whale one. And then forwards and backwards on spout after spout. My great spout rider Sneelock gets spouted about. Just as long as the water they're spouting holds out. Then my tournament knights, noble apes without fears, Sir Hector, Sir Vector, Sir Bops, and Sir Beers, Sir Hawkins, Sir Dawkins, Sir Jocks, and Sir Jeers, clatter into the tent, and while everyone cheers, sta stage a roust about joust with their boxing gloves spears. And while all this wild ruckusing goes on below, at the top of the tent, look, the star of my show, great daredevil Sneelock, the world's bravest type. He comes pulled through the air by three Subrian snipe on a dingus contraption attached to his pipe. And while people below are all turning chalk white and all biting their fingernails off in their fright, great Sneelock soars up to a terrible height. Then he shakes himself loose. He starts down in a dive, such as no man on earth could come out of alive. But he smiles as he falls, and no fear does he feel. His nerves are like iron, his muscles like steel. 
and he plunges down down with his hair till still combed neat four thousand six hundred and ninety two feet then he'll land in a fishbowl he'll manage just fine don't ask how he'll manage that's his job not mine why, he'll be a hero, of course he won't mind, when he finds that he has a big circus behind. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed this story, and I hope I see you all at the circus next week. I have one question. Is this a fiction book or non-fiction? Who can remember? If you said fiction, you are right. It is a not a true story right obviously not okay guys i'll talk to you later love you bye bye